teachers. Has anyone ever questioned why you're teaching so many different ways to do a division question or a multiplication question or addition or subtraction? Math these days means that us as teachers teach lots of different strategies for how to solve many different addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division equations, which often leads to a lot of confusion and frustration to those of us that are not in education. It's even more frustrating for us as teachers because this is new to us too. It is not something we were taught when we were growing up, and none of this was modeled to us by our math teachers to us. So we're really walking blind so many of the times when we are trying to teach these new strategies. We know it's important, but it feels unfamiliar and awkward for us too. Hi, I'm Patty, and I am a teacher here in Ontario, Canada, and I'm also the founder and CEO of madlylearning.com. It's my hope that through these videos, we can make teaching in the junior grades simple, fun, and engaging for both you and your students. So let's dig in and talk about new math. The reality is new math is not new. If you ask anybody that is really, really strong at math and they are quick and they can solve a lot of math problems in their head, if you ask them to do an equation in their head and then ask them the steps that they followed to quickly solve that, what you find is a lot of the strategies that they're using inside their head to solve that math problem are actually replicated in the strategies we're teaching in new math. The reality is, is that not every student is going to intrinsically come up with these shortcuts in their brain to be able to solve these equations. We, as teachers, need to teach them these strategies explicitly. We need to make it visual and make it make sense so that they can start off by writing it down and eventually stop writing it down and use the same type of math process in their head to solve questions without the use of pencil and paper. Our goal always in our math classroom is to help students understand how to use math to solve problems. We are not always focused on just getting the right answer. Well, getting the right answer is great and important. Understanding how the process works, understanding how you got to your answer and being able to choose the right strategy to fit the question you have is definitely the biggest skill later on in life. So with new math, we teach multiple strategies because we want to make the mental math that happens in your head or should happen in your head really explicit. So we can make sure that most students are going to be able to solve these questions. Also, we need to recognize that math is really going from what you know and becoming more efficient. So if you think of multiplication as an example, probably before we learn multiplication, we understand the concept of addition, that we're adding things. But what if we're adding groups of things? Well, we can use repeated addition. We can add 36 groups of seven and we can count them all and it would still get us to the right answer, but it's not efficient but it's your first step. It's your first step in understanding exactly what multiplication is and what it means, is using that repeated addition strategy. Then as the numbers get larger, you realize that repeated addition isn't efficient and there's gotta be a shortcut. So you begin to find shortcuts and you begin to solve math in different ways and all of these processes and strategies that we select are shortcuts on the path to figure out the most efficient strategy, which is pencil and paper, the standard algorithm. That by far will be the quickest way to solve your multiplication question if you have a pencil and paper. But we're not going for speed. Being good at math is not about being fast. It's about understanding the math. And when you truly understand what's happening, you can go back and forth between using pencil and paper tasks or mental math strategies. You won't always have a pencil and paper and you don't always wanna to have to be pulling out your calculator every time you need to solve a simple math equation. So by teaching students both, both the efficient pencil and paper strategy, as well as the mental math strategies that we first teach explicitly on paper and then have students move those into their mental math strategies that they can use in their heads, this really is the most efficient way to teach math. We also have to recognize that lots and lots of students learn math differently. Some students need every single step laid out for them very explicitly and fully explained. 
Other students love finding connections and finding shortcuts and getting really efficient really fast. And then you have other students that really need to manipulate the math and see it, draw it out, make pictures, make lists. All of those things are valid strategies that a student can use. But if me as a math teacher only ever teaches one strategy, and if it doesn't make sense to a student in my classroom, just say, well, this is it, this is how you do it. If it doesn't make sense to it, if I just left that student behind, or there's some work I can do to bridge the gap for where they are now and where they could be later. Can I meet them somewhere in the middle and coach them to a more efficient strategy? Math is a continuum. So we need to teach it like it is on a continuum. And that's where these new math strategies really come into play. So sometimes in your math class, you may have parents that jump the gun and teach them the most efficient strategy really quick, or they wanna get their kids fast at something. So they just hammer in the standard algorithm for multiplication or teach the long division really early. But without true understanding, that could be problematic. So what do you do? As a teacher, how do you combat that? We well, find the best way to do this is through communication. So before I start any of the lessons on using different strategies for addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, I bring my parents into the secret. Essentially, that's what I kind of think. This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And here's the process. I know that you want to just teach them the standard algorithm. And I know that is the most efficient strategy. And teaching them all of these other strategies is frustrating because it doesn't make sense to our brains because we never had to be taught how to think about math this way. And yes, it takes a lot of time. And yes, if you're in a speed test against somebody with a standard algorithm, you're going to lose if you use some of these other strategies. That's not the point. Our point is not speed. Our point is understanding. So by telling parents and having them be part of the discussion, including them in the thinking process of why you are teaching things the way you are teaching, asking them to be patient, asking them to be supportive of this and explaining why, kind of opening up the doors and explaining to them exactly why you're teaching things the way you're teaching them and why it's going to work is probably by far the most efficient way to get parents on board and have them understand what you're doing. They may not like it. They may wish their kids just got to that standard algorithm much faster, but at least they understand why you're doing what you're doing. And they, they get it. They may not like it, but they get it. So I always try to either send a email with links to videos explaining to parents the different strategies that we're going to be learning, why we're learning them, why we're learning them in this order, and why it's important not to teach them the standard algorithm right away. There will be a time and a place, and I always promise, yes, they will be taught the standard algorithm. That is still very important. But there's certain skills and behaviors and understandings that need to be in place first before I teach them the standard algorithm. Because if I teach them that standard algorithm too early, they just learn the process and they don't understand why the process works. And true understanding is understanding why that standard algorithm works and getting that it's not always the best way to do it. And it doesn't always reflect how a student learns. So we have to be really conscious of that. We also have to recognize that we weren't taught this way. We did not have leaders as math teachers that taught us any other way other than do it this way, practice, practice, practice. Do it this way, practice, practice, practice. Which is why we have so many people thinking that they're bad at math versus if they were like me, who always considered myself bad at math, the reality is had I been taught these new strategies that I've now learned as an adult, I would have been so much more confident as a math student. I'm good at math but I don't think about math in the same way as what was taught. I don't think about the standard algorithm in the same way. I don't always fit into a box as a learner. I always question, I need to know exactly why. I didn't wanna skip any steps. I wanted to have a full and complete understanding, which is really frustrating and annoying to people that are really strong at math, that I need to have it all laid out to me that you can't just shoot numbers at me and expect that I'm going to be able to process all of that in my brain. I need to see it. I need to draw pictures. I need to make lists. I need to keep things organized and then I can solve it. I need to see the math happening in front of me for it to make sense. 
But as a student, it wasn't taught to me like that. So I struggled. Doesn't make me bad at math. But it did make me think I was bad at math. And had I had somebody that taught me what I know now, I would have probably been far more successful in mathematics during my own schooling, which is probably one of the largest motivations as to why it is so important for me to teach students these new math strategies. 